So far, we've discussed the meaning, applications and the formulation of linear programming problems. We will now discuss how a linear programming problem is solved. Before we begin, can you tell me what an optimal solution is? The maximum or the minimum value of an objective function for the given problem is the optimal solution. But the question is, how do we solve a linear programming problem? Well, there are different ways to solve these problems. The problems having two variables can be solved graphically. Like in this example, there were only two decision variables, x and y. While in this example, we had three decision variables and hence we can't solve it graphically. In such cases, the problems are solved using the simplex method. For now, we will be discussing the problems based on the graphical solutions. To solve a linear inequality with two variables on a graph, we will use a coordinate plane. We know that there are four quadrants in a coordinate plane. As the decision variables in a linear programming problem should satisfy the non-negativity constraint, the values of x and y should not be less than zero. It means they will lie in the first quadrant only. Therefore, to solve these problems on a graph, we need to use only this quadrant. For better understanding, let's solve this linear programming problem graphically. In this problem, we need to find the maximum profit which is denoted by the objective function z is equal to 50x plus 18y. So let us find the values of x and y which satisfy this linear inequalities. As the solution needs to be found using a graph, let's represent these inequalities on a coordinate plane. How do we graph inequalities? We will first write the corresponding equations for these inequalities. Can you write them here? That's right. These are the corresponding equations. Next, we need to graph the lines of these equations. And we can do that by finding the coordinates of x and y intercepts. Let me help you with the x and y intercepts of the first equation. For the x-intercept, we substitute y equal to 0. We get the value of x as 50. So the coordinates of the x-intercept are 50, 0. And to find the coordinates of the y-intercept, we substitute x as 0. That gives us the value of y as 100. The coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, 100. Similarly, we get the x and the y-intercepts of the second equation. With these points, let's draw the two lines representing these two equations on a graph. Let's mark the four points first. With this, the first line can be drawn like this. It represents the equation 2x plus y is equal to 100. Likewise, let's draw the second line representing this equation. Give it a try. Here's the line representing the equation x plus y is equal to 80. So how will this graphical presentation help us find the optimal solution? We will first mark the feasible region of this graph. Do you know what a feasible region is? It's the common region determined by all constraints of a linear programming problem. Each point of a feasible region satisfies the linear inequalities of the problem. So let's mark the feasible region for this problem. If we consider only these two linear constraints, all the points of this quadrant will satisfy the given inequalities. And hence, this entire quadrant can be the feasible region. However, if we consider these two constraints as well, the feasible region will get restricted to the region O, A, B and C. As you can see, the two lines intersect at point B, 20,60. The region within these four corner points is the feasible region of this problem as each and every point of this region will satisfy the linear constraints of the problem. For instance, let's take the point 30, 40. If we substitute these values for x and y respectively in the linear inequality x plus y is less than equal to 80, we will see that the point satisfies the linear inequality. In this way, 
every point within and on the boundary of the feasible region can be the feasible solution for the given problem. It means the points on and within the region satisfy the linear constraints. Then how will we find the optimal solution? Since there are many possible solutions for this problem, we will use the corner point method to find the maximum profit. Now what's a corner point method? In this method, the solution of a linear programming problem lies on the corner point of a feasible region. The coordinates of the corner points are substituted for the values of x and y in the objective function. In this example, points O, A, B and C are the corner points of the feasible region. We will evaluate the objective function by substituting these points as values of x and y one by one. First, let's find the value of z at point O. The coordinates of point O are 0, 0. 50 times 0 plus 18 times 0 gives us 0. Likewise, can you fill in these values of z? For the second point, we get the value of z as 1440. 2080 for the third and 2500 for the fourth point. So we have all the four values of z at the corner points of the feasible region. Since our objective is to maximize z, the optimal solution lies at point C 50,0 because the value of z is maximum at point C. This is how we solve a linear programming problem graphically. Let me ask you a question here. Is the feasible region of this problem bounded or is it unbounded? To answer this question, we first need to discuss the meaning of the terms bounded region and unbounded region. And why did we choose only the corner points? And how did we find the feasible region? We will continue the discussion in our next lesson.